Up the mighty hornets. Come on, you horns. Hello, and uh, here I am, Roberto the Pro, also known as FPL Yellow Army, the official juicer for FPL Juice next season. And I'm here to give a little intro into my Watford thoughts. And I'm going to try and just give you an insight into some players to look out for and some, you know, juicy gossip that's been happening over the last few days. So, yeah, hopefully you enjoy it. And here we go. So I am Roberto Hollis, the official juicer for Watford FC for FPL Juice. Uh, you can found on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and YouTube and TikTok, of course. But um, they have been amazing in their content creation over this season. They've risen in a thousand subs and, you know, they've got to keep on going and uh, you've got to keep on supporting them. They've been fantastic weekly videos and I'm being elected as the official juicer for Watford, which is known as the journalistically untrained, untrained independent club expert reporter. So I'm going to give you some advice on Watford players for their Premier League campaign next season in the fantasy Premier League game. But let me just tell you that first of all, what are my thoughts on Watford and how they finished last season? Well, the first thought to come to mind is jubilation, absolute jubilation. It was a great season. To bounce back at the first time of asking was a fantastic achievement, not to mention the, you know, background of COVID, no fans and, you know, so many financial troubles that relegation does give you. We had the parachute money, but it was always going to be a struggle. And the players did have a lot of bumps in the road, it's got to be said. You know, under Vladimir Ivic, we were too negative in our play. We were getting 1-0 wins, but we were always counting on a moment of magic and we weren't winning the game comfortably. But Vla uh, Vladimir Ivic gets sacked at the end of December and it was a completely appalling uh, way 2-0 loss to Huddersfield. But who comes in? The man that no one's heard about and fair play. A lot of Watford fans were sceptic about his appointment, but, you know, he was amazing. And that is Shisko Munoz, the man who was at Dynamo Tbilisi, of course, a player um, at Valencia, a very good player. And he has just been unbelievable. You know, Vladimir Ivic is very strict and, you know, conservative and hardworking in his approach. But the complete opposite is that of Shisko Munoz. So smiley, such a lovely character and just a perfect player to get his arm around a uh, perfect manager to get his arm around the players, really encourage them and motivate them. And we we just never looked back really from that. We beat Norwich in his first game. That was an amazing result, 1-0 uh, from his Ismaila Saar. Um, and then we go and just really go on a great run. And it did take a, a few games for us to really get into the stride of things. We were awful against Coventry, um, but that was a wake-up call. And we changed formation 4-3-3. And then since then, we had an absolutely brilliant, brilliant season. So... It's so, so tough to bounce back, but we did it. And we did it with a lot of really impressive stars. One of those is on the shirt, Joao Pedro. Joao Pedro, the Brazilian wonder kid. Now, he, of course, uh, did feature a little bit in the Premier League restart for us, but not enough. And it was criminal that we didn't really use him. He has been so fantastic. You know, in his first full season at the club, he scored an amazing amount of goals, really often running and scoring goals that you know, are very high quality. That goal against Derby away, the goal uh, that he scored away to Preston, you know, just chips it over the goalkeeper. It, he has a, had a really good season. So it'll be really fascinating to see how he gets on next season in the Premier League. Can he make up that step? I think he can. Um, but also a lot of midfielders there have had a great season. You know, Tom Cleverley, Will Hughes, and also you've got to mention what a job Nathaniel Chalaber has done in the middle of the park. He's matured so much had a lot of struggles with injury and we sold Kapu, but genuinely with Chalaber in there, taking on the captaincy armband, he really didn't make that loss of a player of Kapu's quality that felt really. So it was an amazing season and I was absolutely buzzing. So in terms of transfer gossip, um, after Watford secured automatic promotion uh, with uh, that win that they got against Millwall, um, there's been a few transfers that have been rumoured and they've been kind of relentless really. But we have got a few over the line. So let's start off with the transfers we have got done uh, so far. Of course, it's still quite early in the window. A lot can still, you know, happen. And these transfers, of course, do have a big role to play, whether we can stay up. But in terms of what we've done so far, we've brought in Quadwo Bar 
from Rochdale, and he is a very up and coming, exciting player. Now, in Project Restart, we decided to go with buying the big name players, and that was a bad strategy because then what happened is, you know, the players weren't committed for the club. And these young players are going to be hungry and wanting to, you know, play for Watford, the community club, instill the values into the team and just get them over the line. And this guy looks really good. Nearly signed for Man City a few seasons back, but, you know, he's got a lot of potential. We also signed Matty Pollock um, from Grimsby Town, a very, a very good uh, potential player once again. Uh, we've also gone and signed Danny Rose. He returns to Watford on a free. That is a great signing. He may be 30 years old, but... He's still got it in him, in my opinion, and uh, he's got a lot of international experience and very versatile at, at left back. We've got Messina, we can rotate there. So there's some really good options that we've brought in. Um, also, Ashley Fletcher up front, he gives us an option. Uh, Dwight Gale we've been linked with, but in terms of other players, we have locked in and uh, transferred in Imhan Luza. Now, Imhan Luza uh, plays for Nantes, and he is a very, very exciting prospect. Uh, very good talent, so really good to see that over the line. But in terms of rumours, we've got Maxwell Cornet. That looks like it might be uh, struggling to get over the line. Also, Ashley Young might not happen now. Uh, Arnaud Danjuma, Dwight Gale, Josh Doig from uh, Hibernian was a good um, option. John Macojola uh, was a, a very interesting pick, the Spanish uh, player there. And we've also been linked with the wonder kid from Palmeiras, Danilo, as well as Elias Chair from QPR um, and Rafael Santos Bore, uh, the striker for River Plate, along with uh, Jens Peter Horg. So a lot of really exciting players linked with Watford. And to be honest, there's, you know, an endless list, really. We've, you know, released Lazar, we've released uh, Carlos Sanchez, but it's a really exciting team that's developing right now. So if we can just get these next few transfers right, sign a big striker who's going to help the team score goals, then it could be really, really, really good. Um, so in terms of manager, it looks like Shishko Munoz has been locked in as the manager because he's currently doing a training course to have a pro license uh, and manage in the Premier League. So that's really good to see. And the impact he made, that kind of felt deserved. He needs that opportunity to have a go at it, really. Uh, and finally, the clubs at the Euros, we've got Ken Semmer and Daniel Backman, and they've performed pretty well so far, especially Daniel Backman, in the lead up to the Euros against England, what a performance. But then he had a little bit of a shocker against North Macedonia. But he's still a great player and he's going to do uh, a lot more impressive uh, goalkeeping for us in the Premier League. But Ken Semmer's not got the chance yet, still yet to be substituted on. But I'm sure he will do his best. And finally, of course, follow FPL Juice on all the socials. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, it is at FPL underscore Juice. Um, and it is, of course, going to be every Tuesday night, the podcast on Tuesday, 8.30pm on YouTube. Go give them a follow and tune in for their great content. Apologies, it was spent, meant to be five minutes long, but, you know, I had to pack in a few things there. So thanks for watching and I shall see you hopefully a lot more next season.